America first when Donald Trump was in office. He capped the number of refugees coming into the U.S. at 15,000 people per year, but President Biden raised that cap to over 62,000. And with the flood of Afghan refugees coming to America, it begs the question, who's vetting these individuals and where are they going and what's happening to that 62,000 person cap? Joining us now is Newsmax contributor and constitutional attorney Jenna Ellis and Amir Bino. Welcome to the show. Great to see Thanks you. Thanks for having me. All right, Jenna, I'm going to start with you. Uh, without having the support of our Afghan uh, allies and government on the ground, how thorough can these vetting processes actually be for refugees and actually SIV applicants as well? Well, clearly there's not uh, much thorough vetting going on as we're seeing pictures already of refugees that are landing at Dulles Airport and other uh, states across the nation. And it begs the question, Lindsay, um, how thoroughly are these people being vetted? Uh, because they're already here. And obviously there are a lot of people who advocate for humanitarianism, for refugees. But we have to remember that first and foremost, the primary obligation of our United States government is to protect our American citizens first. The entire reason that we have vetting procedures and protocols uh, under the INS and under uh, DHS is to make sure that we protect America, secure our borders. And Biden is uh, obviously just advancing policies that are putting America last. And this is exactly just raising this question is why I was suspended off of Twitter for two days, simply asking this question of whether or not there would be a terrorists that are coming in uh, when you don't have these proper vetting procedures procedures in place. I think it's a valid, legitimate question that a lot of Americans are raising. And certainly it's incumbent upon the state's attorneys general and others uh, to look at pushing back on the Biden administration protocols. So, Amir, what can states do? Because some of these governors of specific states are welcoming uh, refugees into their states. But then you think of these smaller communities. We were just talking to Chairwoman Kelly Ward, who was saying Arizona is not so ready. Maybe it's not the right place. So what can these cities do to push back if they feel like they don't have the resources or the capacity or their hands tied? Very little, unfortunately. Under uh, President Trump, he had uh, put in place an executive order that was ultimately struck down by the court that would have given uh, cities, municipalities, states uh, the ability to, to say that they didn't want to have those refugees in their areas if they they had to consent to have them in writing. and uh, But that was struck down, and then Biden rescinded it. Uh, and right now, legislation, Section 412 of the INA, which is the uh, Immigration and Nationality Act, actually doesn't give states any power to object to federal placement uh, of refugees. So there's very little. What we should be doing is taking these uh, these refugees, uh, perhaps doing what President Ford did back in 1975 and bringing them to Guam, uh, 111 South Vietnamese refugees were vetted in Guam, and that vetting process can take over two years uh, before they were brought to the mainland U.S. And uh, that might be a, a more, you know, a safer route to go because, as Jenna correctly pointed out, we've seen terrorist attacks, whether it's the San Bernardino shooters or the, the Pulse nightclub shooter uh, or the Boston Marathon bombers. We don't want a repeat of that. You know, as I mentioned, we did have Dr. Kelly Ward on the show, and I want to play sound uh, from what she said about the planning of this administration. Listen. We do know that refugees do better when they are resettled somewhere near where they're from, places where they share the culture, they share the food, they share the customs, they share the terrain, they share the weather, they share the language. Um, certainly coming to the United States of America and coming to the heart of Arizona may not be the best place for people who are fleeing Afghanistan to come. We have plenty of allies in the Middle East who could be taking the vast majority of these refugees. Listen, Jenna, people that are supposed to be here, people who are SIV applicants that should be, we want them to thrive in America. Uh, but how much does this show the lack of planning by the Biden administration that they are just seems like throwing these people at different states. Well, clearly the Biden administration hasn't planned anything. Uh, when we've seen the absolute disaster of, uh, of disengaging and withdrawing from Afghanistan, and of course the uh, horrific news that 13 of our American soldiers um, unfortunately perished in the Kabul airport bombing, um, this has, a, has been a disaster from the beginning, and unfortunately it's not even the end yet. So I think that uh, Dr. Ward correctly points out that there are some alternatives, and also Amir pointed out correctly that there are alternatives to just bringing in refugees 
refugees that are completely unvetted um, and in such little time to mainland America and um, basically forcing them into uh, these American cities. Uh, not only is it not great, as Dr. Ward pointed out, for the refugees themselves and people who do otherwise qualify to be here, um, it may not be in their best interest, but certainly it's not in the best interest of America. And Joe Biden, as the president of the United States, his first and foremost obligation should be to America first. But clearly their lack of planning, their total disaster has put America last. Amir, don't have a lot of time left, but do you think that the Biden administration will try to raise this cap, of the number of refugees that American can take in, 60, over a little over 62,000 right now? Will they raise that? And legally, what does that look like? About 30 seconds. Yeah, they did already. In fact, I think for f this fiscal year, it was raised to the 65,000. But as for next fiscal year, it's up to, I think, 125,000. So that's already been a done deal. Um, so I, I think we can expect uh, him trying to push it more. Wow. Jenna, Amir, thank you for being here. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank Thanks. you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.